Hi guys, David Tex here, and what you're looking at right this minute is a nut, as a bone nut on a vise inside my office. Alrighty. Now, whoopsie, I've already cut three of these uh, on film. Okay, but uh, the problem is that uh, they get sawdust all over. Sorry, bone dust all over the place, and make it a freaking nightmare to get a camera even close to it. Some of these. Elect, electro, electrostatic about it that uh, it goes right towards the camera lens so I had to do it uh, off camera while these cuts uh, to finish these things up but I've got a bunch on there that you will be able to see uh, how it is to work with a Dremel right and uh, right now I'll tell you this is a uh, diamond uh, Dremel cutting blade that I got at uh, uh, one of the, the uh, you know sorry at one of the stores got it it's like a uh, 17 or 20 bucks for this diamond cutting blade. I tried one that looks like a rip saw, and uh, you have to buy a gate uh, for it to make it work since it's kind of dangerous. And it defeats the purpose of uh, trying to cut this the way it's all set up, right? It was really, it, That type of blade was not meant to uh, cut bone, right? Also, I have a coping saw. You can see this or not because it's so big. Let me back this thing up a bit. I've got what's called a coping saw. See this? That I've used in the past to cut uh, these bone nuts with, right? And uh, the last one I did, actually, uh, I put it on a, a sander <laughs> with a set of needle nose and just held it down until it got you know, the right shape and the right uh, uh, height off of it. It was very simple to do. It took about 15 minutes just, you know, listening to some music and sanding it. <laughs> but it just does take a long time. Uh, so far, I've cut these. It takes about two or three minutes with a coping saw to cut one, right? And it takes about a minute to cut one with a Dremel. <laughs> but using a Dremel, right, it's free-handed, and it's not very easy because you can just tilt that one way or the other, and it's going to be difficult, right? So your first few of these, you might want to test it on something else other than a uh, you know real one, such as a crappy one or one that's, uh, you know, another bone nut you've uh, messed up or whatever, <laughs> To get a feel for it. And uh, like I said before in the other video, uh, make sure that you can see your score lines on the nut itself, right? Of course, you can't see that right now. This has a score line I can see right, to cut by. You follow me? But make sure that you can see that score line on that nut at all times. So if you cut it away, guys, just go make sure to put it right back again, okay? Just just fill in the, uh, the cracks that uh, you created on the nut itself with it was a crayon or a pencil so you can see what you're doing it makes it much easier so you don't get out of line all right and another thing about these is that you'll see they're trapezoidal okay so if it's flat on one side you turn around the other that angles be changed a bit you got it so you have to make sure you stay within the same plane that you're cutting in not easy if you first time you've done this but coming up if you're standing above it and cutting like I just did earlier it's easy to see, okay? It's a bit changed, so you come out a little more, more this way instead of this way. You got me? Not that hard to do with a Dremel. I'm surprised. I thought I'd really ruin this thing, but it came out pretty nice. Now, uh, yes, there will be some hand finishing on this with the file, but thankfully, I am so well below the cutting line on this that uh, there'll be no problem just shaping this with the file, right? Same with the other one. I'm still above the cut line, so it just means taking a file and filing that rest of that part out. Or I can put it on the sander and just do it like I've always done, right? And just kick dust everywhere. <laughs> and something to consider when you're using a Dremel is that these things will spread bone dust, which smells like burnt meat. Actually, it does. All over the friggin' place. I guarantee you. It's like, man. That's why I got this drop cloth back here and have it on the ground, <laughs> got it everywhere around me to get all this bone dust and collect it. I have to wash these things out when I'm finished, right? These things here, this stuff here. You follow me? Anyway, uh, once it's all cleaned up, uh, I'll put these back. Well, I'll put these on the guitars they came off of, the uh, plastic ones, toss those. And. Uh, these actually make great shims, too. The extra material that you have, if you've got a, uh, an acoustic, you can use this as a shim. 
That's Bone Shem under the uh, bridge. You got it? So nothing's wasted, guys. And uh, so I went to this diamond cutting blade, which is like, like I said, 20 bucks for this thing at, at most hardware stores. And it works perfectly. But it also works very fast. And it can get away from you. And it actually can, you know, just go right down that <laughs> or right down that surface and just to remove it so quickly that uh, you've cut the wrong direction. All right. And as I said in the first video, the key to this is having a good solid line to work with as you cut it away. And if you remove it, like if you're doing, you know, gentle cuts like I've been talking about doing, just going over it, you know, lightly. If you remove the whole thing, you need to go back and take that same pencil and score it again with that pencil. You got me? Now, scoring it, uh, I've tried using an X-Acto knife. I tried using a, a, a very sharp uh, a scoring tool. But the best thing I've found so far to use is a coping saw. Okay? So what I'll do is take this coping saw, start my line very gently uh, pulling it, right? Cross that bone. Start my line down this, this nut. You can see that? I hope so. Let's get a little closer. Is that still in focus, guys? I don't know. I don't think so. So anyway, what it's doing is pulling that uh, line straight down the uh, uh, nut, but it's also cutting the width of the saw blade itself, all right? So that's something to consider, the width. So you start on the outside edge of that line so that the, the width of the blade doesn't come into play because that's how delicate this is on these cuts. So now the next trick is to use the Dremel, right? Now that I've scored it, I want to use the Dremel. I want to come right down it like, just like this, right, and come right down that line that you see, all righty? But it's not an easy task to do. And what I found out so far is that it slings. Darn it. This thing slings all kinds of bone dust everywhere that gets all over your camera. Which I don't want to have happen. Okay. So, what I've got to do, guys, I've got to back this rig completely up. Right? And zoom in on it. I am way too close. And something else I'm going to do is I'll cut this one first to show you how well this thing cuts. And then, what I'm going to do, so I don't score this now. I'm using a little shop vise I've got. And they're very common. They're like $10. It's got a little attachment here at the bottom. Right? That you just tighten up on. And uh, it's got a flat, uh, smooth surface on the inside. It's not those, you know, very sharp grabbing type things. It's just flat surface. You got me? So far, you may not be able to see this, but so far, it's doing a heck of a job cutting into this thing. All right. You see that? Bear with me, guys, because I'm way away from the camera right now. Okay, so hang with me. I'll have to move the camera back to keep this dust off of it. Okay, so now I'll tighten it back down again. All right, move it a bit upwards. Let's move it a little more upwards. Is everything working still? It looks like it. All right, I'm going to take it down where that chip took place. Tighten it up. Not too tight. You don't want to damage the thing. All right, go back over that line again. All right, very gently. Let's see how I've done so far. I may have missed the line. I did. That's all right. The line wasn't straight either. <laughs> what it looks like, guys, is that once you start, it will keep it straight. Okay? Because the original lines that you're looking at, I was off by quite a bit. I'm kind of angling away from the body of the nut. But it is keeping a straight line with that cutting blade because of the way it's made. All righty. So, I'm going to try to uh, finish cutting through this.
There it went. Okay. You witnessed that by the fact it fell off. <laughs> so, the first one, the first effort was a total disaster. I've learned that I'm not going to be able to do this on camera. All right? I've got to be so close to it, my face will be right here by the camera trying to see what I'm, you know, trying to see what I'm doing rather than out here and stretching my arms out, okay? And that's kind of a no-no. <laughs> All right? So, uh, let's try this again. Okay, guys. Now, the good part about this bad cut is that I left enough on the uh, wrong side of the cut to actually take a file and file this flat and straight. You follow me? A lot more work to be done, guys, by doing it this way. I think, you know, it could be that uh, it's not going to be as easy as I thought it would be to get the Dremel done. But see, I'm below the line, so I still have plenty of room and space to work within to, to file this down. Sorry, to file this back down to where it's actually flush and flat and will still work. Okay? Now, uh, I've got the real one here. It's marked properly. Right, you can barely see that line. See that line there? There's one. All right, that's marked properly. Got another one here marked as well. I'm pretty sure. I've got another one marked for a different guitar. All right, another friend's guitar. See this? And what I think I'm going to try is use the coping saw all the way through this job, so I have to go back and just you know do some more handwork with that file and try to shape this thing up. Uh, it could be that doing it with Dremel is uh, you know a little bit too difficult to do. Uh, it's very hard to handle. I can tell you that. But let's do this. Let me try this. I'll try one more with the Dremel, and I'll get my head in there where it belongs, you know, <laughs> so I can see what I'm doing this time. Be real close to it. Put on some goggles and something across my mouth so I don't breathe this crud stuff in. Because it was, it, believe it or not, guys, this stuff actually smells like burnt steak <laughs> when you're cutting on it. <laughs> it smells like burnt meat in here right now in this office. That's amazing. Of course, it is bison bone. But anyway, uh, let me get back with you on the, using the Dremel and... Uh, I'll cut away here and see if I can't do this a little, you know, better by being closer to the project and be able to uh, see what I'm doing uh, rather than reaching. Okie doke. So hang in there. Well, guys, I take that back. Look at this. All right. So I can show us a little better. This thing actually made a beautiful cut on this uh, bone nut that Dremel did. On the top part of it now it's really close to it with my goggles and a mask on because it smokes like crazy but look at this that's a perfect cut along that line so yes it can be done with a dremel right and any other extra work that has to be done on this nut right such as just you know final shaping you take a uh you know take a metal uh, file and just uh file it back down some more you follow me so I'm going to flip this over and finish it off and show you the finished product here. So hang in there. Wow. Okay, guys, take a look at this now. I was a little bit on the shy side this time too, right? You can see I have this extra bit of uh, bone nut left to take the file to, okay? So, you know, it only took like a minute or two to cut this thing so fast. But, uh, yeah, it gets a little hand out really quickly. And I was really more concerned of staying in the same plane. You know what I'm saying? So I will have to go back and do some hand filing on it. Get that thing done. All right? Now I've got this other last nut a friend wanted me to do. So I can find that one. Yeah. This one has such a very small amount of uh, bone to take off. I mean, it's just a tiny amount to get this height down to meet up with this Gretsch that he's got. Okay? I mean, it's just a small, small amount. And uh, a thing I'm going to do on this one is not actually use the uh, uh, Dremel. I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and use the uh, coping saw with it and then give that a shot there and see how that works out. Remember, you got to be careful scoring it for the first time. Whoa, not easy. Once you get started, 
You pretty much got it. You gotta remember to stay in that same plane. Alright? Oh, you hear us or not? It's pretty noisy. <laughs> oh, I've been working on the bone nut. <laughs> Whoa. Remember, you don't pull hard, you just kind of pull softly and keep it in the same plane as when you started, right? You little angle down to it. And if you get resistance, let's let up on it. Don't keep pulling harder against it. Because then it'll chatter like it's doing now. Just let up on it. Yeah. Let those teeth blade do the work. And you see from the buildup of the, the uh, bone dust, right? It is cutting very well. This little coping saw. And this is getting as boring as uh, mud drying, so... <laughs> What I'm going to do, guys, I'm going to cut away and uh, finish this job off. And uh, let's see the final result. <laughs> this is going to take forever. And I want to make sure I don't cut the end of my finger off. <laughs> now that comes squirting out on the camera. <laughs> and we're just about finished with this right now. Oh, it looks like I have to work on this one, too. Look at this, guys. Even using the coping saw... I've kind of chatted around it a bit, so it looks like I have to take the file and file that down as well. Darn it. Anyway, your alternative is, like I've done in the past, use a sanding tool, right, and just sand the crud out of it, hold it on the disc as you're sanding it, and just, uh, <laughs> just fall, drop it on the ground, and just hold it, you know, like this while you're sanding it. Letting it go down and down, further and further until it makes your marks. Right? But on these I've cut today, I'll go back with a file, right? And I'll file these up. Okay, you get me? And I'll make these uh, just perfectly flat on the bottom to where they'll work just uh, fine with these uh, with these uh, guitars that my guys want, okay? So, any questions about this or any other videos I've done? Or these questions about, uh, you know, the uh, guitars that are coming up? Uh, be, you know, feel free to, you know, leave me a, a note or comment and, uh, uh um, also, I want to thank those guys for subbing again. You know, that was very uh, nice, you guys. Keep adding to my subs. So that's always appreciated. So, any other questions, Dave and Texas, have a good one. Bye.